Hello everyone and a warm welcome to those of you on live stream. Uh, it's almost 12 o'clock and we will be starting our live stream service uh, pretty well now with some gathering music. Uh, we face the toughest possible time in East London at the moment uh, and we've got a very small congregation in the church but they're very welcome uh, but I guess an awful lot more people are watching on live stream today. So, uh, we want you to be as much a part of this service as possible. It's a special occasion because we are baptising Jordan and Victoria today. And they are just arriving at the church now. Uh, talk about brinkmanship. So, we're going to start with some gathering music and uh, then we'll launch into the service. So, um, do join in. You can find the service order on our website. Just follow the links. And it'll be great if you can join in. The advantage of being at home, of course, is you can sing as loud as you like. I'm going to start playing some gathering music. Suggesting that at communion uh, you put one hand out to receive Holy Communion rather than both hands, then we can all stay a bit further away from each other. 
And as usual, there will be a collection plate passed around. Uh, there's an offering bucket at the back which we brought up at the end of song number four. Iris is leading our service today uh, with Richard leading prayer and praise. So I'm going to hand over to Iris now. Iris, all yours. Good afternoon and welcome if you're here. Welcome to all those on live stream. We're one body. We may be separate, but we are one body in Jesus. And we're living through really difficult times at the moment. People are scared, people are anxious, people are sick. But you know, we have the promises of God that whatever we're going through, He is walking with us right by our side. If we go all the way back to the Old Testament, Moses said to the people of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And that's a promise for each one of us. And we can think of Jesus' words as well. I am with you always, so he is with us. So we come to give him praise for his promises, praise for his faithfulness. And we come to learn together how we can serve Jesus when we get out there, where we can be light and salt and make his name known. So I'm going to hand over to Richard. It's lovely to have him back. And he's going to lead our prayer and praise. Iris, it's lovely to be back and it's lovely to be able to lead us in this time of worship wherever we are celebrating. It's good that we are able safely to still have people in the building. And as it's been since March, it's great that people are able to tune in wherever you're watching across Facebook and across the virtual plane. These are difficult times, but our songs this morning remind us that there's still reason to let that praise rise up within us, to turn our eyes and our hearts and our thoughts towards God. So we'll still sing our hosannas. We'll be reminded that throughout the dark times, as throughout the good, there is none like our Lord who has been with us since March, is with us now in our fellowship, allows us to feel confident to come together to praise his name and to ask for his continued guidance and support. And then we'll sing of how wonderful that love and support is. Now, to, the, to those of us gathered here in the service today, I'm afraid the best I can offer you is some very quiet, very safe mumbling behind your masks. But if you're tuned in across the Facebook thread, please do go to our website, find the, uh, the order of service for today if you haven't already done so, and wherever you're tuning in from, join in as we sing our hosannas, and we sing the praise truly still is right.
as we make sense of the weeks and the months to come. As we look to comfort one another, as we look for scientific, and economic, and governmental guidance, we know we can always turn to you, for there is none like you. We thank you that we can come together, physically and virtually in fellowship, to worship safely. In the name of your Son, in his name we sing and we pray this day. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our third song. It's still worth doing the old St John's rock and roll favourites, singing about wonderful love. But just think as we sing it each time, of the three words describing that love at the end of the chorus. Healing, forgiveness, wonderful love. We know our world needs healing at the moment. It's found in the love of the person we're singing the next song to. We know in our anger, in our anxiety, when we say things possibly we shouldn't. When we think things negatively possibly we shouldn't. But there's a need for forgiveness. It's found in endless, unique, unchanging, wonderful love. Healing, forgiveness, wonder. Let's sing about love. Inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and 
worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to confession on the same sheet. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Give us grace, we pray, to live as children of a heavenly Father, to follow in the steps of Jesus, your Son, and to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The special prayer for today. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to your calling as adopted children, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen. And now I think we're moving to the baptism. We are moving to the baptism indeed. Uh, and if you're in church, you've got two gold-coloured sheets this morning, so you need the brighter-looking gold-coloured sheet for the baptism. And uh, I'm going to speak through a mask. And one of the things we need to do, guys, is to try to make sure that we don't break the two-metre rule. So Jason's going to pick up our camera and follow us for two metres. Can we have uh, Tim and Ava and Jordan Victoria at the front, please? You're welcome to stand and turn towards the font, okay? But don't crowd me. Give me two metres. Bridget is very kindly giving me a gold sheet because she knows that the first thing I do is lose all papers. Uh, if you're on live stream, sadly you won't have the words for the baptism service, but uh, you can join in anyway. It's great to have Jordan Victoria here. Uh, because of lockdown, uh, church has been somewhere they only come intermittently over the last uh, few months. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not quite a new space, but it's a new experience for in, in a whole service. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit. And has given us baptism as a sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin, that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity. And God calls us to fullness of life. So let's join in a prayer together. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give to your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by the same Spirit, that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love, and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. I'm going to ask all of you who are here a question now, and if you're on uh, live stream, the answer is with the help of God, we will. Let's hear it loudly. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Jordan and Victoria and uphold them in their new life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. That's good. And um, Tim and Ava. Parents and godparents. Godparents are not here. They're in Dorset and Italy, aren't they? And they're watching us on live stream, haven't they? Canada and Italy. They're watching us on live stream. Uh, parents and godparents, the church receives these children with joy. Today we're trusting God for Jordan and Victoria's broken faith. Will you pray for them, draw them by your example in the community of faith, and walk with them in the way of God? We're going to God to be with them. And in baptism, Jordan and Victoria begin their journey in faith. You speak for them today. Will you care for them and help them to take their place within the life and worship of Christ's church? We 
with the help of God, we will. I expect nothing else from the church. Well, well done, thank you. Um, so, we're all going to join together now in a decision. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of your sins? I, I repent, repent of my sins. Do you renounce evil? I renounce evil. Jordan Victoria, Christ claims you for his own. Jordan, receive the sign of the cross of Christ. Victoria, receive the sign of the cross of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight Find for the as, as a disciple of Christ, Christ against, against sin, sin, the world, and the devil, and remain faithful, faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Amen. And join the Victoria, may the Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. We ask for God's blessing on this water now, I hope it's warm. We praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus. On him you poured your spirit in his baptism in the River Jordan. He sent his followers to baptize all who turned to him. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this water, that those who are baptized in it may be cleansed in the water of life, may be filled with your spirit, and may know themselves loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. Amen. And now together, we're going to proclaim with Tim and Ava our faith as Christians. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, this is a new experience for me. I'm going to baptize these kids using a very long spoon. <laughs> it's a very nice, shiny spoon. Um, and Tim and Ava, you might get wet as well. So, um, Jordan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we get a bit wet, Jordan? Here we are. <laughs> and Victoria, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, there is a cough here, guys, for you to, uh, to, to wipe them down. I guess it's a bit here in the John and Victoria, may God who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit, and come to the inheritance of his saints in glory. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we pray for John and Victoria that they may grow in faith, that they may grow to know the love of Jesus, that they may grow to be part of our fellowship here more and more at St. John. Lord, we pray for Tim and Eva's parents. We pray that you'll give them grace and wisdom to care for these children and to teach them your ways. Oh, we pray for the godparents in Canada and Italy that as uh, Trump restrictions are removed, they may come to know these children better, may be set them a good example. Lord, we pray that as these kids grow up, they may know the love of Jesus in their lives and the protection of Jesus around them. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tim and Ava, we have two candles here. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like, we need the symbolism. Sorry, I'm in the way of the camera here. Here you are. You want to light the candles? Stick the tray on there. Stick the tray on there, light the candles. One for you, one for two. Uh, these are baptism candles. You can keep these as a reminder of their baptism. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a lady, Dad's got, we have sheep dog, you know, 
high speed. There we are. Don't give me that, please. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place for the saints in light. You receive the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Let's give a round of applause. You can make it round of applause. Now, can I still afford to never let me go to the house? I've got too many. <laughs> I hope we got a screenshot somewhere there, Jason. Yeah. With any luck. Yeah. Okay. And they all <laughs> Well done. Okay. Do take your seats again. And someone's going to read to us now. I want the water. You might use this later. Beware, Robert. taken from the book of Psalms, number 40, verses 6 to 10. Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but my ears have been opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am, I have come, it is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, O Lord, as you know. I do not hide my righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, begin to read at verse 13. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptised by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptised by you. Do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, in Christ. Well, our theme today is the baptism of Jesus. And I have to say, it must be the Holy Spirit at work, because when we fixed this date before Christmas, we had no idea that this would be our theme. But uh, it's good to have a visual aid uh, when we're talking about the baptism of Jesus. Now, uh, water is important stuff, isn't it? Um, water is important stuff. Um, our theme is new beginnings from now until Lent. And water is all about new beginnings. Um, I would guess, let's have a sniff. Yeah, I would guess that most of you had a wash or a bath or a shower this morning, but I can't smell too much. Um, and um, water is what we use to start every day. It's very much a symbol of a new beginning, a new start. First thing I do when my feet hit the ground is head for the shower. Now, our theme is the baptism of Jesus, and there is a sheet that Carol just reminded me. On the church website, uh, there's a, a worksheet for the kids uh, all about Jesus' baptism. Uh, I'll refer to that a bit later, but it's, it's there on the website. Uh, if you want to copy kids, uh, Carol's coming around now, I think, with some gelled hands. But water, it's a symbol of cleansing, isn't it? We wash away the dirt of the day with it. You know, we start again, we start a fresh new day. And as we talk about a new start, then, well, 
Baptism is a new beginning. It's a new start for everyone. It's a new chapter in our life. So why was Jesus baptized? After all, if baptism symbolizes the washing away of sin, but well, Jesus had no sin to wash away. If baptism symbolizes that we are declaring ourselves to be God's children, well, Jesus was already God's son. So, why was Jesus baptized? Well, it's all about new starts, new beginnings, I think. And to start with, baptism was a new beginning for Jesus. Very much a new beginning. Now, if you know your Bible, you'll know that we know a great deal about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, shepherds, wise men, Mary, Joseph, stable, all the rest of it. You know, it's a well-known story. The only thing we learn about Jesus between his birth and the beginning of his ministry at baptism is that strange little event where he gets lost in the temple that Luke records. Parents take him to the temple and he wanders off like teenagers tend to, but he doesn't wander off to the nearest amusement arcade. He goes and talks to the teachers of the law and his parents come and have to drag him away back to Nazareth. I wonder if as a teenager Jesus said, that's so unfair. What do you reckon? What did Jesus say? Yeah, uh, mother of teenagers reckons there, He'd have said, that's so unfair. Um, you see, Jesus' baptism was the start, the beginning of his ministry. Now, I have no idea what Jesus did between the ages of naught and 30, apart from visiting the temple and giving the teachers a hard time. But I do know that at the age of about 30, he went to be baptized by John, and from then on, it was action all the way. It's a new start, a new beginning for him. It's a new beginning, I think, in more than just the sense that it's a commissioning, but it's a new beginning in the sense that Jesus consciously, from this point on, took on our sins. He identified with humanity. After all, John's baptism was a baptism for repentance. The baptism to enable people to say sorry. And Jesus didn't need to say sorry, but he wanted to show that he was fully a human being. Sometimes we think that Jesus is just a sort of pretend human, acting apart. Not a bit of it. Fully human. That's part of the Christian message. And in being fully human, he identified with us. We talk about Jesus taking on our sins. Well, this was the start of the process, guys. He said, I'm going to repent on behalf of all humanity and go into this baptism water. It's a beginning a symbolic beginning of Jesus taking on our sins. It's a symbol of Jesus saying, I am following this human life and eventually this human death to its conclusion. So it's a new beginning for Jesus. Baptism was a new beginning as well in God's plan of salvation. I'm indebted to my commentary here. Um, if you want to focus on verse 17 of our reading from Matthew, uh, I'll repeat it to you. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Now, we all know those words. Um, some of the gospel writers say it sounded like thunder. Some people say that only Jesus heard it. But it seems from Matthew that others heard it as well and saw the Spirit of God descending on Jesus. Now, there are two Old Testament references in this one verse. And my commentary pointed them out to me. First one, is from Psalm 2 verse 7 and Psalm 2 verse 7 says and I will read it to you uh, it says I will proclaim the Lord's decree he said to me you are my son today I have become your father those words were apparently used when the kings of Israel were crowned they were part of the coronation ceremony you're my son Today I have become your father. That's God talking to the kings of Israel. The kings, who, of course, were in David's succession, who followed the promise of God to David that one of your children will be king forever. Now we know Jesus fulfilled that promise. He was born in Bethlehem, David's town. He was born of David's line. So it's picking up God's promise. This is going to be a king in the line of David. The second and even more important prophecy 
uh, refers to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. Famous words. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. The prophet Isaiah presents God's servant not as a conquering hero, but as a suffering servant, a servant who goes willingly to his death, a servant in every sense of the word, serving God's people to the end. You see, the new start here is that God shows that Jesus is a king and servant. Yes, he's the man in charge. He's the man with the power, but his power is shown through service and sacrifice. A new beginning in God's plan. The Old Testament was all preparation for this. From now on, it's a completely new start. Salvation through God's beloved Son. Salvation through the service of Jesus on the cross. Jesus' baptism was also a new beginning for John the Baptist. Before Jesus was baptized, John the Baptist was a bit of a celebrity figure. He was the prophet. There had been no prophets for 400 years, and suddenly here he is, proclaiming repentance, baptizing people, drawing crowds. Now, if you have seen the kids' sheet on live stream, it's John's account of Jesus' baptism. And in John chapter 3, verse 30, John says, as he baptized Jesus, now he must become greater and I must become less. John's job is he was to prepare the way for Jesus, to lead, to lead people to repentance, to let them know that something new was coming, to get them ready to open hearts and minds. As soon as Jesus was baptized, John said, okay, I can take a back seat now. I pointed to him, I witnessed to him, I've got the crowd ready for him. They're repenting nicely. My work's done. A new beginning. Retirement. Now, if you know your Bible, you know it wasn't a, a very happy return for John the Baptist. But, you see, he'd done his bit. It's time for him to move on. A new beginning. And fourthly, of course, Jesus' baptism is a new beginning for us. In the Old Testament, God was up there, a bit distant. If he came down here, it was only because we were in trouble. God was a remote figure, a slightly frightening figure. We certainly didn't identify with him. In the New Testament, we see the fullness of God's love. God hasn't changed. But he's shown us a whole new side of his character, a new beginning in our relationship with him, because suddenly Jesus has come to be one of us. He's come to be part of our life. He's come to live alongside us. He's come to show us how to live. He's come to give us new life. So Jesus' baptism is important. It starts this process of Jesus ministering in such a miraculous and such an amazing way. But even more, it shows that Jesus is one of us. One of us without sin, but one of us who accepts life as we live it. As we live in these uncertain times, these difficult times, these sometimes frightening times, let's recognize that Jesus is with us. That's his promise always. A new beginning, a new salvation, a new relationship, a new understanding, because Jesus has taken our sins upon him. And Jesus has joined in our human life. Thanks for listening. Nick is going to lead us in prayer now. Shall we pray? I pray for all new Christians who have received the Holy Spirit into their lives. Lord, keep them. I pray, Lord, for all Christians who are worshipping on live stream and around the world. Lord, be their portion. Let your love rule and reign in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. 
Pray for this world that is under stress and strain and trouble. Lord, under the various countries all over the world that are suffering as a result of this pandemic, many people in fear, Lord, because of what could happen. We pray for all the countries and peoples, Lord, that you will have mercy upon them, Lord, that this pandemic will come to an end and, and bring to an end the suffering of so many. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of Hong Kong, Ethiopia at this difficult time, and other countries, Lord, where there are problems and strife. We pray, Lord, for this, our nation, as the number of COVID patients are increasing and infections, Lord, rise. We pray for the health services, Lord, that have to uh, deal with the uh, uncertain amount of work. We pray for the frontline nurses and doctors, Lord, who treat the ill, that, Lord Jesus, that there will be relief in their suffering. Lord, in your mercy. We commit all those who are unwell amongst us. We pray for Andrew, for Minta, for Margaret, for Sue, for Mona, for Esther, for Mary, for Stephen, for Tom, Bernadette, for Pauline, and Lord, others that are suffering as a result of this coronavirus. We bring them, Lord, to you, and all those, their families, and all those that care for them. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the life of Jewel, Sandra's mother, for the life of Albert, Constance's brother, and for Abigail, and for the life of Jack Ferguson. Lord, we bring all these families and commit them to you. We pray for peace and mercy and comfort into their lives. And Lord, we also think of uh, those that have lost loved ones as a result of the illness of corona, we bring them to you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will be there, present in their situation, and that, Lord, that they will know that you are the one who cares for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And in this month of January, we pray for those who suffer from leprosy. We pray for those who work and treat it. We pray for all who work and rehabilitate sufferers worldwide in the leprosy mission. And Lord, we bring all those, Lord, that, uh, that help in this area, in this field of leprosy, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them, that you will protect them. And all these prayers, Lord, we, we pray for ourselves for this week as we come before you. Lord, we ask that you will uh, lead and guide our lives. In your mercy and in your name we ask. Amen. We'll now share in the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. So brothers and sisters here in church and those at home, may the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you all, and especially those online. Peace be with you. Amen. We'll now uh, join in our next song, song number four. Uh, this is also our offertory hymn. Uh, my heart is full of admiration. If you wish to um, place uh, an offering, we have a bucket at the back of the church uh, which you can um, place the offering into. Um, we're, we're not passing the offering plate or uh, bucket around, so if you probably need to stand up and go to the back and place your offering. So song number four. Oh, 
thanks for these gifts and gifts that are given online. We ask you, Father, for your blessings, that these gifts may be used for your kingdom, to build your kingdom. That you bless all who have given. May you bless their homes and communities. May you give them your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our communion prayer is on the goldish sheet. And for those online, you can follow um, on the website. Um, there, there is communion prayer you can follow through there as well. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We invite all communion members of any Christian church uh, to come forward and receive communion. If you do wish to come and receive communion, those who are in the church, um, please do come down the aisle in a single line, um, socially distancing, keeping away from the person in front or behind you. And as Dave said earlier, when you get to the front, uh, Nick and I will be here. Extend one hand, just for one hand, and we'll put the wafer into your hand. Um, and when you finish, please go back to your seats using the side aisles. So brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts. By faith, 
with thanksgiving. And I receive the wine on behalf of the church. Amen.
eternity. You opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayer after communion on your gold sheets. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Right, newsletters are green this week, and please take note that um, we need to stay two metres apart at all times. One of the things we're asked not to do is to mingle after services. Now, if you're on live stream, you can mingle with your own household, okay? But we can't mingle together, so don't hang around gossiping, is what they're saying. Um, it's, if you are going to talk, talk outside at two metres, please. Don't get too cold, okay? Um, we are in very, very difficult times. And I want to say, please be extra, ultra careful. Um, we have a number of church members who've been pinged by the app and are self-isolating. And Radcliffe's not here this morning, you see, because Pauline uh, tested positive. And Radcliffe and jay -Ann have tested negative so far, but please do pray for all those who are caught up in this. Bev's not here, she got pinged by the app. There, it's estimated that one in 30 people out uh, in, in, in London uh, have COVID. So what have we got here? About 25? So yeah, they could, yeah, so there could be you know, one or more of us here. So be, please be ultra careful. The second thing is when it's your turn for the vaccination, please go along with it, okay? Um, people have got lots of questions about vaccination. If you want to talk to me afterwards, I'm just waiting for my turn. Joan's had now a second vaccination. Well done, Joan. How are you feeling? You're feeling fine. Let's give a round of applause. Well done. I really do think this vaccination is our way out of this awful chaos that we're in. So if you're worried, come and talk to me and I will talk it through with you, okay? Um, okay, um, there's a, an evening service. That's a repeat of uh, today's services. And the YPF Zoom is taking a break for the moment. We're open for personal prayer, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, Monday to Saturday. And uh, you can come in and pray, you can come in and uh, have a, a socially distanced chat if you want to. You won't get a cup of coffee because that's not allowed. Or you can phone at Robert or I in the office, okay? One of us is usually there 10 till 2 most days. Um, Iris is doing a prayer walk, uh, but they're not allowed to join you, are they? Because that would be more than two households. You and Pat do it, yes? So that's it. Two households only, so you can't join Iris in the prayer walk, but you can pray where you are. And we're praying for that bit, Tennis Road, Vernon Road, etc. Okay. Thursday Holy Communion um, will carry on at 12.40, again a repeat of today's service. Um, what else do I need to say? Next Sunday we're, we're not doing at 10 o'clock, because we think we could fit everyone in at 12 and at 18.30. Um, there is a strong encouragement, obviously, for people who can to join us online. And many people are unable to join us online. Many people, frankly, want the excuse, uh, the company, um, being part of a large group if you live alone or if you're feeling lonely. Um, Christchurch Three Mills is continuing. Uh, they're on Zoom. If you want more details, um, email Dan and he will uh, love to invite you. Um, the usual message of giving, if you want envelopes, talk to Carol and I will arrange it. If you want details of this bank standing order, a number of people have taken up new standing orders, we can give you the correct form. Uh, the 2020 con confirmation is sadly cancelled again. It was meant to be the 31st of January, Bishop Peters pulled the plug on that, and um, he is now holding the confirmation on the 18th of April at 6.30. When we hope with vaccination, uh, we will be uh, a little more free to move around. Uh, the Hero the Purpose event, um, that's going um, online as well as going on Zoom. Do follow the link to book the event right link. And there's a, a YouTube video that tells you what it's all about. Follow the links on the website if you want 
face-to-face, -face, a two-meters um, conversation. Robert will tell you about it because he's one of the organizing group, okay? Um, and some good news. Um, the Diocesan Advisory Committee have given us permission uh, to put up six CCTV cameras around the church. You know that a couple of years ago we were subject to an arson attack and we've had lots of ASB and as a result of that the Home Office is paying 80% of the cost of a bit of fencing to replace that ugly ready fencing uh, near the tower door which will restrict access to part of the churchyard and uh, for six CCTV cameras around the outside so we can now watch you arriving at church and make sure you're behaving yourself in the car park, you know? No, no dodgy driving, yes. Uh, yeah, there's a round of applause there. Um, so, uh, a dozen times over the last few years I've been asked by the police if we have CCTV because they need it to identify bad things happening in Stratford. So now we will have CCTV. So many thanks to Home Office paying 80% of the cost. Um, and many thanks to new planners who were incredibly helpful. Now I do need to say again, okay, as far as I know it's only us and St Francis who are open in Stratford uh, today. We can only stay open while we stay safe. Um, and if someone comes in and sees us misbehaving, or if someone thinks that our, we're not safe, um, we will be shut down. Uh, so please, stay safe. Um, our new risk assessment is on the notice board. You can read it. It's on, I think it's on the website as well. So you can read some of the um, precautions we've taken. I have loads of birthday cards um, today, or at least loads of birthdays. And I'm going to gel my hands, otherwise Carol tells me off. Um, and first uh, birthday card for Jordan Victoria, um, who were two yesterday. So Jordan Victoria, I believe, is on your queue, okay? Round of applause, there we are. It's wonderful to have you in church this morning. Uh, so I've also got a birthday card for Ifil Ifilua Aina, who is four. This week, round of applause for Ifilua, please. Um, and a birthday card for Emmanuel Balde, who is six uh, this week. Round of applause, please. I've got lots more birthdays. It's Sam Ansa's birthday on Saturday, and he'll be 21. If you're watching Sam, sorry, no card. Sharon Davis's birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Sharon. Kingsley on Luca's birthday uh, on Monday. Happy birthday, Kingsley. Runya Araro, McCauley's birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Runya Araro. And Janet and Babiaka's birthday on Wednesday. Janet isn't, isn't here today, but let's give her an extra round of applause. Happy birthday, Janet. And if you have a birthday this week, may God bless you richly this week. Uh, that's it on notices and birthdays. Let's put these back in and the we'll pulse goes off. And we're back to Robert, who's going to end our service. And the next song, which is our last song, uh, will be song number seven. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Lord, number six. Lord, I need. My apologies. Song number six, not number seven. Lord, I come. I confess. Yes. Lord, I come. I confess.
Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>